Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 3 of the Manly Hanley Podcast. This is the podcast with no limits on what we'll cover, unless it's something totally psychotic or not worth covering. I'm your host, Randy, and with me today, I have my co-host, Krista. Have a snack, sit back, and relax. This episode was recorded on March 31st, 2019. Today's episode title is Driver Dissertation. So let's get started. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Krista for being here today. She's been sick for about a week, and her voice just came back, and she is a champ and decided to join me today. I really appreciate that. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. Thank you. And, um, well, let's get started with this, and I'll talk about um, a thing I commonly hear about is how annoyed drivers are with one another. Is it all drivers, or is it eh, more I mean, specifically you? It might be me sometimes. It might be a little... Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, a thing that my uh, fiancé commonly hears, though, is how annoyed I am with those other drivers, right? Yes. Okay. Well, that's why we titled today's episode <laughs> Driver Dissertation. Um, so um, I'm going to have to get some of your input on uh, some of these. I mean, it might be my opinion, but you might have to correct me because I don't see how I act. Um, I'm not a road rage person, just to clear that up. I do get frustrated and do nothing um, with the state of just drivers in general. Um, so being annoyed with drivers, we'll start with uh, regards to them being in the emergency lane. Um, the emergency lane is for emergency vehicles. Can you define what the emergency lane is? That would be in, well, in Michigan anyway, um, and I believe a lot of other states, the left lane on a highway. Got it. So the lane that I think is just for going fast in. It's also that as well, yes. It's also the fa the passing lane or the emergency vehicle lane. So if I see emergency vehicle approaching, coming, and I'm in that left lane, I need to get out of the way. And that's what I do. So the, um, but the emergency lane is, I, I still favor to give that to the police and emergency vehicles, ambulances, whatever. And also just for me to pass other vehicles that are going 25 in that lane or whatever. And on the freeway, that's often near you know, where a police officer may also pull over to the shoulder. And recently there have been some laws passed. Um, they're actually in effect now where you have to slow down to like, I think it's 15 miles per hour. If you are close to that police officer, that's on the shoulder because many people have, have, have been hit. And that's one thing I frustrate. It frustrates me. I don't know why, because it's just that people are so careless about that and could hit somebody. And it's just like, I know I can't change everybody. And I'm not a perfect driver as well, so I'm getting. I'm sure other people are getting mad at me for things I do that I don't realize. Which you know, just to be fair, are uh, you allowed to just drive in that lane if you're going fast? If you're passing a forty mile long s train of traffic, I guess I don't know. Um, but it's up to a police officer to just expect they could pull you over. I but think. you're not supposed to just stay in that lane and like go. You're supposed to just use it as a passing lane. Yes, that's what I, that's how, yeah, just like out in the country when you're on a yellow dotted line, you, you use that to pass something, then you get over, otherwise you're in oncoming traffic. I, I look at it as not staying in that lane, yes. Mm. I mean, what if it's two in the morning? Y yeah, I mean, if there's other cars on the road coming up behind you, get over, right? I, yeah. I, I think, that's how I, that's how I treat it, but I just try to stay out of that lane. I make it a habit, because I don't want to get a ticket. And, um, well, officers have pulled drivers over, for the record, for driving too slow in the fast lane. And there's a Twitter page of a sergeant, and I'll, I'll put it in the show notes, where he states how many people he's pulled over for this, just to make it a point that it's illegal. And the link, I'll have the link to the actual tweet and the law in Michigan here, anyway. It's, it's possibly a law in your state as well, if you're listening from, from outside of Michigan. Um, I think a solution, though, for this traffic issue could be a concept similar to a networking switch. And this is coming from a geek's point of view. Um, I think think of how like networking equipment works in your internet in your uh, internet service provider's office. Um, you can route billions of packets of data exactly where they need to go. So something like that, but for us. <laughs> um, now I don't know if that's how self uh, driving autonomous vehicles work or what, but to me that concept makes sense. Um, can you can you put that into layman's terms for me here for the non geek? Okay, so. Yeah, maybe you're sending your you're sending a file to somebody over the internet. 
that file is com- comprised of many millions, billions of packets of data, depending on the size of it. And that has to get to that person. It doesn't just go straight there. There's error checking. There's things going on that make sure that file gets there the exact same way that you sent it out. And it's just like, I think if that can be done, and, you, and, you, um, and this is my layman's terms, I don't understand the, how the traffic and uh, programming behind all that would happen, but like, could that somehow be, on a larger scale, the way we're routed oh. from one place to another? Didn't you have an idea about like the vehicle beeping if you had been... <laughs> like, what, about, what about that That's idea? Like, <laughs> how come I have to hear all the... This is why it's called a dissertation, because he has a lot to say about driving i get a lecture <laughs> every time we drive to church it just inefficiencies bother me for some reason more than it should like it's like you, but you can't fix it all today i i gotta understand what's that. your what's your beeping system <laughs> so this came about this thought um actually from your sister um remember she was talking about how her newer vehicle had that feature where it kind of tugs you into the lane oh yeah i was thinking like well if that's already happening with all these sensors these really sophisticated sensing technologies that are on your vehicle couldn't that just happen for like, hey, you're in the left left lane too long, get the F over? You know what I mean? Just like, get over. Like, and it just kind of starts tugging you, but not dangerously. It just starts. It just beeps at you like, beep, beep. Yeah, like a little beep, beep. And, <laughs> and then you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm being selfish and I'm in the, the passing lane and I'm not moving. And, or you know, one of those things, that, that, that can be done. I mean, this technology that's already happening with the sensors and the vehicles and parking assist. That can be done. That's some really amazing technology, um, because we we know the vehicles can already sense the lanes, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that 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 would be a cool idea. The beep beep. Hey, you've been driving in the left lane for two minutes. Do you really need this? Kind of like that kind of message. Uh, it's like when your um, Pandora says, "Are you still listening?" <laughs> exactly. That, that's that's a good uh, good point. And maybe we don't need all this computing. Perhaps just a retake of the driving test could be something. Would I mean? It is shocking that you only have to take it once. Yeah, I'm afraid I wouldn't pass. I mean, I have a perfect driving record. Knock on wood. I haven't gotten a ticket since I was like 18. I do not have a perfect driving record, and I probably would not pass. Yeah, yeah, you would. you're 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 an excellent driver. You're very good at knowing how you, the the limits of the vehicle, and you know Tokyo sliding into a parking spot. Uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> is, it, is it Tokyo Drift or what is it called? Drift I just have a small car so I can park in small spots. Oh, okay, okay. No, you... Well, yeah. Alexa doesn't think I'm a good driver. Well, now Alexa's going to respond because it, being that you have a sister with that actual name that existed before the poser oh. Alexa on our uh, Internet of Things devices... She now answers your sister, and that's not fair because your sister was around before her. Side side note, there I was, yeah, true. That's not fair to your sister, by the no. way. This this girl's really popular now, and uh, come on, come on. Your sister's way cooler than this Alexa that can't even answer a simple math problem. Well, maybe my sister couldn't answer a simple math problem either, though. Uh, now now we're gonna get in trouble. Oh boy, you're in trouble. I didn't say that. <laughs> um, the, so the the uh. Yeah, maybe we don't need all that computing. Um, the passing cutoff to get in front of you and block you thing is another reason I get sick of that that lane. I just like passing people because somebody will be driving in that lane, not rightfully so. People will start passing on the other in the other lanes, and it just kind of creates a whole like domino passing effect. on the right. Yeah, thank you. It, it, I it's it's that's where it just kind of gets messy for me, just because of one person's action. Almost similar to like when you're in a parking lot. And somebody parks a little bit over to the right or left, and then the next car parks a little bit, and then you just got a big disaster because one person started it because they're sloppy. Sloppy, sloppy Joes. Yes, yeah, like almost as sloppy as me eating a meal. That's you know. You're pretty sloppy. Pretty sloppy, but I, I mean, if I'm in a restaurant, I'm like, oh, look at this bib and napkin, and <laughs> but you know, when we're in like the kitchen or something, I'm just don't be around me. It gets ugly. Okay, come back. Come back. I'm back. Um, So we're going to take a little short break here. Uh, Coming up on the Manly Hadley podcast, the next part is still about driving and how people do not use their turn signals. Oh, Lord. Don't get them started on the turn signals. Don't get me started. And we're back. (laughs) Um, Your break wasn't that long, was it? That's because we don't have a sponsor yet. So I just have that pause set up there for the time when it comes, when we have a sponsor. When we become famous. Yeah, yeah. When we're famous. And uh, by the way, how's your tea? My tea's good. It's, it's a mint medley. How's your coffee? 
It's good. It's a Colombian bean medley. It's just where coffee comes from, I guess. Well, it's probably not even. It's just... Is it? I don't, I don't know. know. This is organic. You're drinking the organic decaf <gasps> coffee oh, yeah. that Mary got us. Mary, that stuff is awesome because I never thought I could like decaf. And a person like me, once in a while, needs decaf if you drink caffeine in the morning. Otherwise, you'll be up all night. Who doesn't? But to, you can't taste the difference. But it's the way the bean is handled, right? Right. Because I've always had that impression that decaf coffee, there's a chemical process it goes mm. through. And it's like, okay, you're not getting the natural... Just like if they're taking the caffeine out, how are they doing that, right? They're filtering. Somehow they're chemically treating it, right? I, I assumed. And d- this decaf is organic. And I'm like, well, I've never seen an organic de- I haven't had an organic decaf. And this is the first time I saw it. And it talks about how there's like n- no chemicals in it. And we're not endorsing any coffee. I don't even know the brand. But it's we just order it when we want it. And uh, yeah. Mary, Mary told us about it. Thank you. It's really, really good. Good. So um, for our next section here, the show's a little bit shorter today. It's a fun topic, but a, a more of a rant topic. It's uh, continuing with the driving and the driving subject. People not using their turn signals is the next section. So, how do, how do you, Why don't you share with us how you feel about people not using their turn signals? I will. A few days ago, though, you and I were driving, and I saw a guy speeding up, approaching in the, you know, the rearview mirror. And he, I was wondering if that guy that he was that was driving ninety miles an hour was an emergency vehicle. Nope, just a person that probably didn't leave on time or use a turn signal while driving like a madman. Now everybody's life's in danger. That's what I feel, and this leads me to turn signals. What do you think about? It? Doesn't it seem? Do I take a little bit of offense to you that? You get when, really angry. Like you literally have honked at people who for not using their turn signals. I've gone as far as honking. You're I, such a madman. I chase them down with a with a nice little honk. I don't, you know, <laughs> I, I I and I don't get how people like follow each other like, like these crazy people that are road raging. You know? That's super dangerous. Right, right, and, and they they probably would chase me down right for honking at me. That's yeah. why I tell you not to honk at people. What if it was a nice little beep 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 beep? <laughs> now this this was this was a honk like hey you're gonna hit somebody watch out you know, but. Yeah, so that, that's when you have to blast out of the way, and the mer- and, and that's and of course I move because I'm in that emergency, as I call it, lane. I I get out of the way if I see somebody approaching, and it's like, oh, that wasn't an emergency vehicle. That's just a psychopath. Um, and and everybody, all of you listening, have seen this. It, everybody sees that person just bobbing in and out of traffic, and you're like, oh god, they're going to cause an accident. Oh my gosh, you know, you just that's that's the thought in my mind because it's just terrible there could be a family there could be anybody yeah and that that yeah that makes me dangerous. angry it does it makes me angry that people and i know i can't change that person the way they are going to drive they're probably going to do it again even if they for that for some reason at that moment realize they were driving crazy they're going to do it again like so people not using turn signals i take it a little more personal than i should like they're out to get you like they yeah. purposely were like i am not going to let randy know which way i'm going to turn <laughs> It's a Ooh. secret. Oh, makes me angry. Well, I'm not going to use my turn signal to personally attack you. Uh, you know, that's that's maybe what they could be saying. I don't know if it says anything about their actual personality. Like, is that how they are in real life? You know, I mean, they could be like the nicest person too. It's just like they get in the car and then they they just change. They there's some kind of kryptonite in the car and they just flip out and <laughs> step on the gas and oh, look out, everyone. Well, they're driving a dangerous weapon. And I know plenty of people that have lost their lives in a car accident, as it's so common, a lot of people listening probably do, and I don't like to touch on that too much. But I, I lost a second cousin, our neighbor growing up. Maybe I'm a bit scared, but it's it's easy for me to take a simple, it's easy to, for me to take a simple lack of caring on another person's part and correlate it to a tragic past. Maybe, maybe that's what's going on. But for the record, if you Google something, you can find a study in your favor so I'm certain I could find, a, anyone could find a contrasting study to this one by just Googling their favorite words, where the American, um, or I guess it's just the Society of Automotive Engineers, they studied 12,000 drivers and concluded things such as 42% of drivers that didn't use a turn signal said they simply didn't have time for it. They're so busy. They're just so busy. They, they, what are know, they doing that they're too busy to use their turn signal? I don't know. I mean, right next to those buttons on the steering wheel that's within reach at all times. I don't know. And 23% of drivers, according to this study, admitted they were just too lazy. Well, at least they're honest. You know? 
Um, but every state, as far as the research I can find, every state requires drivers to use turn signals to indicate a turn or a lane change or a passing. So, so use your turn, turn please. signal. Please, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just like it's just like I don't know. I don't know why that bothers me, but it, it it could be dangerous, right? You're driving fast. Now, a turn signal. Okay, if I'm in the the left turn lane and it's a green arrow, I'm assuming the person's going to turn left anyway. Okay, maybe there. But when you're going 80 miles an hour on the freeway, some people faster are going, and they it, it becomes a little different. It's exponentially more dangerous. What is it after 40 miles an hour? I'll just make up that number. Like that's when a, a vehicle's really dangerous. Yeah, that's really made up. <laughs> well, that's not from the study. It's no, it's my emotions. I'm gonna go with that. So. But I think it's fair. I think people need to be safe. But I also think that you can get in dangerous situations if you honk or people who like get super mad. You don't want to be in a road rage situation. I can't argue with that. Um, that's that's true. It's like that's something. I myself can correct to be a better driver. And it's like, what else do you do? Just hope that the law catches up with them. Yeah. I mean, that's, I know that's on a lot of people's thoughts. Like, oh, maybe this person will get pulled over. It's the only thing that's going to stop it, you know? Like, yeah. And are they going to learn? Probably not. Chances are their driving record's not perfect. So with that, um, I'd like to thank our audience and our guest, Krista, for joining us today while being sick and recovering. I'd like to thank you for putting time aside to listen to the podcast. Uh, in our next episode, it's another surprise. We have some other topics lined up, but I don't like to announce it because we might change our mind on what we're going to talk about. We really live on the edge. And we're looking at getting some guests here soon. I've had a few uh, offers from friends say they would love to join. And uh, even even some cousins and friends, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Can somebody call in? Can um, we have call-ins? We can make that happen. I could do a um, a mix minus or whatever you call it. I, 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 I... We could have people call in and like that's like super legit. Yeah, yeah, I, I can make that happen. We got. Do you we, have a switchboard? We don't have a switchboard, but there's VoIP. You know, I mean, you got Skype, you got all these different. We're tools. gonna need an intern. We're gonna need <laughs> to hire an intern to handle all the incoming calls. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We can. Um. That'll be Vic. I guess Vic's gonna be. You know, palm over some snacks, and he'll. Um. I know Vic got demoted. I had to shush him. I had to get him out of the chair today. <laughs> he thought he was gonna be your co-host today, but I, I, he got vetoed out. Ah. Well, he Sorry, deserves buddy. it. He just takes that chair all the time. And I know. I have to clean up the fur. I like to, like, roll up the little... Just to make the chair the way it should be. It's so nice of you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you're a new listener, we'd love to hear from you. You can follow this podcast by visiting randyhanley.com forward slash podcast or look for me on Twitter, randrums on Twitter. Also, check out our new Facebook page. You'll see it probably attached to my account or if you haven't been invited already, I'm out to get you. And tell us what you want us to talk about. Yeah. If you have ideas, we're happy to talk from a non-expert standpoint on just about anything. Yeah, I had some friends fill in, and uh, my friend Josh, a uh, life, lifelong friend, uh, suggested some uh, topics for me, and technology-based, which is a great idea. I do have some plans for that, but he gave me some more specific ideas, and uh, I'm going to integrate those into a podcast coming up soon. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great week.